Hi everyone, it's Eliana and I have another card to share with you today. I'm going to be using a variety of stamps for this card. I'll be using the Kitchen Sink Multi Stamp Owl and Autumn Moon Set, the Stamping Up Calling All Heroes, and Stamping Up Cozy Christmas, and later on you'll see me use the Simon Says Stamp Holiday Label Stamp Set. First I'm going to start by prepping my card front with my embossing buddy and I'm just setting my stamp onto the misty and I'm starting in the upper corner because it would just it's just easier for me to stamp the scene this way because the stamp isn't as long as the card front if you notice I'm going to be using the new mouse pad that is available at mysweetpetunia.com the mouse pad has a hard coat on it um, so it's going to protect your grid lines that that you see and you can wipe it and I've even used stays on and used the stays on cleaner and the grid lines are perfectly safe they are underneath the plastic coating you can also flip the mouse pad over and you have the nice foam that you're used to when you use your misty so it's kind of versatile you could still use the grid paper if you choose but this is just another option so that um, you don't have to worry about paper or um, whatnot. I like to use the um, mouse pad when I'm using Versamark because you can wipe it up right away. Where if you're using it on the grid paper, the Versamark stays wet on the grid paper for just a little bit longer and I tend to get more um, smearing on my card. So what I'm doing now is I stamped my image onto a clear piece of plastic so that I could see where my image will meet and that way I know where to put my paper so that I can make a long cityscape on the front of my card. And I'm stamping over and over again with the Versamark because I want it to be a nice crisp dark image and I'm just continuing to stamp until you don't see that seam in between. It's okay to have an overlap on the black one because um, it'll all blend together, but if you're using a colored ink, then you might wanna make sure that you just have that perfect alignment so that you don't have a deeper color or a seam where that cityscape is. Now I've used some clear embossing powder, and now I want to color in the lights in the buildings so that they appear on and so I'm just using a Copic color just a yellow that I had to color in the lights and then when I'm done with that I'm going to uh, want to seal those little yellow marks because I plan to do some distress inking and I don't want to ruin the yellow with whatever ink color I use for my distress so what I'm doing is I'm taking a Versamark pen and I'm just going to color in over where the yellow is and then I'll go back and I'll add my heat powder. And you want to be very careful where you add your marker. I changed tips here. I went, was using the bullet and now I'm using the brush pen because if you go outside of the line you're not really going to notice until after you put your powder on. You'll see what I mean in just a little bit. So as soon as I'm done covering all the lights with my Versamark, I'm gonna go ahead and use my powder, my embossing powder, and I'm just using some white embossing powder. And it doesn't matter if you get more embossing powder on the black, you just have to be very careful to make sure that you wipe off all of the embossing powder from around the buildings because you don't want to um, have the strays there when you do your, your distress inking. So now I'm using the Kitchen Sink Multi-Stamp Owl and Autumn Moon. And it's a really cool stamp set and um, it took me a little while to figure out how to use the stamp, but um, it, was, it, it is so beautiful. I really, really do like this stamp set. First I'm prepping because I am going to be embossing and I'm using Avery L Silver Fox to do my first layer. 
and I did look at the back of the packaging so I could tell which way the pieces go and I'm just trying to um, line it up using the directions on the back. So now I've added step two and I'm using Avery L Silver Fox but I don't want it to be very dark and so I'm just going to do second generation stamping so I'm just stamping onto a post-it and now I'm stamping my Man in the Moon. I want to seal the image. Um, so what I'm doing now, what you didn't see is, I guess I cut it out, is the solid part of the stamp set and so I just used Versamark and I saved this one for last because the Avery L stamps uh, inks, they dry rather quickly for pigment inks and so I wanted to make sure that the last coat would be Versamark so that I could put my clear embossing powder over that. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and stamp um, my Santa and the reindeer over that spot. And I'm using the Versa Mark, I'm sorry, the Versa Fine Black Onyx ink, and I'm stamping it multiple times so that I make sure that I get the nice black crisp silhouette. That that way it'll match with the cityscape. And once I'm done with that. I'm going to go ahead and add my embossing powder and um, coat everything. And what's really cool is that with the Misty, you can go back and you can add the clear layers of Versamark. And then you don't have to worry about masking when you use your Distress inks. Because everything is underneath that coat of clear embossing powder. You don't have to worry about masking or covering up little details. Okay, so now I'm ready to move on to the next part. I'm going to be using my Distress Inks to make my night sky. And what I'm doing is I'm using my um, applicator and I'm adding chip sapphire, black soot, and peacock feathers to create my night sky. I'm starting on the craft mat and sponging onto my panel. And I'm going to keep doing this until I am happy with the night sky. I do want to keep it pretty light around the moon so that it looks like the moon is glowing. What I'm doing now is I'm scraping off some of that clear embossing powder that was right on the very edge of that building and I didn't notice it before until I started to sponge. So I tried to scrape it off and that didn't work so well. So then I just decided to make my building just a little bit wider with a black pen. You want to make sure that you use something that's like a slick writer because if you just use a regular marker, it's going to wipe off. Um, and so that's why I went back and started using my Copic marker and I found another building that also had that little bit of a halo and I didn't want it to uh, show up. So I'm just checking to make sure that it's dry before I start smearing things around. And I'm continuing to make my night sky. So once I'm done with the sky, I wanted to add a little bit more color. So I used my um, seedless preserves to add a little bit of a purple hue around the edges of the card front. I wanted it to look like the buildings in the city were um, a little bit, were causing the sky to be a little bit brighter. If you know, like when you're in a city, you don't really see the stars as much as when you're in the country. And so I didn't want the city, the area around the city to be as bright. So that's why I left it a little bit lighter. Now to create the stars, what I did was I used close to my heart, create a shade paint in Pearl. And basically it's like a base that you can add like uh, a reinker to it and it gives you like a, a pink color, but it adds a little bit of a pearl. And I just watered it down. I didn't add anything to it. And then I just flicked my little stars onto my night sky. Now I wanted to add a little bit of interest to the left side of my card and so I'm just going to create a little panel 
and I wanted the stripes to be diagonal and I didn't have a stamp set or a background stamp that did that so I just took this thin striped one and I'm not sure what what kind it is because there's no label on it um, and I just put my cardstock at an angle if I would have been smarter about it I would have put a piece of paper underneath and stamped and that way I made sure that my piece was at the right angle so that I covered the whole card and I don't figure that out until I add my embossing powder and I've already moved my card so I can't go back and restamp because I've already moved everything and so what I end up doing is I just take that same Versamark marker and I'm just going to continue that line and just add a little bit of powder and you can't even tell that I had messed up and I did add that directly to my card panel instead of creating like a little slit just to um, I'm not sure why I did it that way I didn't want to have to add another strip of paper to the edge of my cardstock I suppose and now I'm adding a little bit of a border I, I like that solid border between two patterns and so I'm creating my own silver paper and I'm just going to um, I noticed that my embossing wasn't completely melted so I went back and melted all of the powder I'm adding that little bit of strip to the card panel and I did trim a little bit of that card panel down what I did notice is that I had some stray embossing powder just to the left of the moon but it kind of looks like stars way in the background so I just left it alone and I did want to add a sentiment and I couldn't figure out where to put the sentiment so that it wouldn't ruin the scene in my card and so I tried to find the smallest Merry Christmas I could find in my entire um, stamp collection and I ended up finding this little bitty one on the Simon Says Stamp holiday labels and it is like the perfect size. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and head on over to my blog and be sure you subscribe so you get the latest updates on My Sweet Petunia. Thanks again. Have a great day.